Strong typhoon possible next week in the Western Pacific on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for May 6th. Right now we have no active tropical cyclones, Hidaya is long gone, we have a track animation of that storm coming out just after our bulletin today and we are unclassified but there are two areas of interest that we're looking out for over the next week and those are both in the eastern hemisphere. First let's look at the Atlantic where it's 26 days until hurricane season and there's nothing to look at in the tropics but we do have a moderate risk in effect across the central plains today and we will be covering that live. We'll be starting an automated stream within about an hour or two after this bulletin. In the eastern Pacific it's just a mere nine days until hurricane season begins and we have no areas of interest right now and things looking very quiet. There's a few little thunderstorms in the very deep tropics in the ITCZ, the Intertropical Convergence Zone. Moving on to the western Pacific then and we obviously still have this 20% chance from an area of interest. Interestingly the JTWC have tagged Invest 90W and 91W nearby to the west. Uh, we think it just might, it's hard to tell, but it's probably going to be 90W that's going to get the uh, become the dominant system. And in the southern hemisphere then we're still giving a 10% chance to this area of interest in the Banda Sea in, in Indonesian islands, very close to the Aru Islands. Uh, but chances of development now appear to be low, um, not just for now, but for next week as well, where things were still looking decent on the models earlier that have backed off quite a bit. Southwest Indian Ocean, no areas of interest now, but there are still some generally unsettled weather patterns in the area where Hidaya tracked around the Seychelles and towards the Comoros Islands. South Pacific looking dead quiet, a few little thunderstorms blowing up there. Uh, in I'm trying to figure out exactly where that is it's probably towards the Tonga area um, and not too much else going on here at all so we've selected 90W to look at right now and this is where its perceived center area would be it doesn't have a center of circulation but it's 319 kilometers from the small atoll of Eurypik 415 from Wolei 800 from Yap, and they're all in Yap province, these islands. 972 from Palau, which of course is its own island nation. And 1067 from Guam, obviously the US territory, which is just off the map to the north. Uh, so it's quite far away from significant populations at this time, but keep watching this system, it could become a significant typhoon. Well, here's satellite imagery right now where you can see all of the uh, um, disturbed tropic regions here in the uh, north of Australia through Indonesia and out through the other side into the western Pacific so you've got generally lots of thunderstorms and convection blowing up in that area here's a look at 90W right now and you can see how it's looking very disorganized as you'd expect for a system that's at such a low latitude by the way only about three degrees north it's going to have to get a little bit further north before we really start to see it ramp up uh, but certainly no chance at the moment that it's going to become a tropical cyclone uh, but when we get towards day three four five definitely five six seven we could start to see this become a substantial tropical cyclone moving northwestwards uh, towards the philippine sea and could also affect yap and palau now here's the other area of interest now that's old imagery from yesterday that was what we were looking at on yesterday's bulletin over the aru islands there that's that little island and this is more recent imagery now that we're looking at the camera's just moved a little bit eastwards there the system itself is strong struggling by the looks of things, little bits of convection blowing up, but it looks like it's really getting crowded out by a lot of other just general thunderstorms blowing up all over New Guinea um, and it would appear that this system is going to be struggling. There's some radar imagery as well of the system uh, showing maybe some rotation there. Yep, definitely seeing a rotation, uh, but certainly not a, a full, fully defined center of circulation there. Here's a quick look at what's going on across the US right now as well. Mesoscale imagery, rapid scan from GOES 
16 uh, showing the view there and a wide shot of everything that's going on uh, some storms still blowing up across the central United States and obviously we expect this fierce line of thunderstorms and tornadoes to develop over Oklahoma and Kansas later on today probably around 2 or 3 p.m. local time there's a quick look at eastern Atlantic there, West Africa, and this is the eastern Pacific with a few little thunderstorms blowing up, but in general we've been dominated by more higher stuff there towards the north. And this is the western Pacific, of course, a wider shot again of those little disturbances, and as you see just how far down they are, close to the equator. And this is the Bay of Bengal where there's lots of thunderstorms really starting to fire up now across Thailand and in parts of Vietnam and some in Bangladesh and eastern India as well, certainly more than we've seen lately. So there we go. Sea surface temperatures looking good in the eastern Pacific and continuing to build 30 degrees plus in a few spots there and the 26 degree isotherm is just about reaching round the coast of Guerrero and Jalisco. And this is the Atlantic region, obviously the Gulf of Mexico, the current there getting better as well, and the Gulf Stream off the coast of Florida. Caribbean looking very good, up to 29 or 30 degrees Celsius off Central America. And this is the Western Pacific then, looking at the Philippine Sea, up to 30 degrees off the coast of the Philippines, and really starting to warm up there now. West coast of the Philippines, very warm indeed in the South China Sea, up to 32 degrees. And even higher in parts of the Bay of Bengal, maybe getting up towards 33 there in one or two spots of the lower Bay of Bengal near the Andaman Islands. Uh, but along the northern coast there, temperatures a little bit lower, uh, but still good enough. Southwest Indian Ocean, a little bit cooler in the areas that Hidaya was in the last week. Uh, still holding on to about 28 degrees though. Mauritius and Reunion still on about 27 degrees as well. Off Australia, we're still looking at a few good areas of warm sea surface temperatures, closing in on 30 degrees in one or two spots off the Kimberley, uh, and in the areas around Indonesia, if that system did manage to do anything, those temperatures are very warm up there as well. South Pacific, still looking decent too, but those temperatures really starting to fade away now near New Caledonia. It's just about to lose its uh, hold on 26 degrees Celsius overall, and uh, the other islands there not too far behind. Compared to average, it looks like this. The orange zones are above, the blue zones are below. The Atlantic is closing up on those cool anomalies in the subtropics, and those warm anomalies are increasing in the main development region over 3 degrees above average. Eastern Pacific is hit and miss, but definitely warmer in the actual main tropical zone. And in the Western Pacific, also looking pretty warm as a rule, although generally close to average around Palau and Yap. They have been all very warm compared to average as well. Here's the South Pacific Oceanic heat content, which is still looking good here as well, uh, down towards Fiji and Vanuatu, but you've got to have a storm to take advantage of that, and it doesn't look like we'll get any now. Eastern Pacific, three spots of orange now showing up on the oceanic heat content charts, and in the Western Pacific, it's looking very good there as well. Some reds creeping in now near Catanduanes in the Philippines. The Atlantic is still taking its time, but it is already ahead of normal. Uh, some oranges there as well in parts of the Caribbean, southwest of Jamaica, some big bulking up of energy there. Uh, the Gulf of Mexico still has some time to catch up yet though. So onto the computer models then, and this is what the GFS has in store for the next five days. It eventually sees the formation of this system, supported by 10 out of the 21 ensembles uh, by day 7. But there it is by day 5, GFS parent model does have it just about reaching tropical storm status, a large and broad system heading towards uh, the western Micronesian islands and towards Palau. There it is again, at the end of that loop, really starting to develop. Here's a super close-up off New Guinea here where this little system is and GFS thinks it might still have another chance there. It is very brief potential cyclonic development there on the 9th and what day would that make it? That would make it Thursday uh, where it could once again briefly spin up into a tropical cyclone uh, doing a little bit of a circle round there and then northwest in the end and then dying off by the looks of things. Very strange system. And looking at rainfall over the whole area here, and this also shows you just how big the island of New Guinea is, uh, but we're looking at very high rainfall amounts for some of these areas on the southwest and northeastern parts of that island, uh, where we could see rainfall amounts from that potential cyclone reaching up to maybe 12 inches, 300 millimeters along coastal areas. Of course, out at sea where it is stalling at the moment could get up to 20 inches, 500 millimeters. 
and then you can see high amounts off the north coast of Papua New Guinea as well uh, and then up towards the North Pacific there you can see the swathe there from that potential typhoon one inch of rain projected on Palau and seven, six to seven inches on uh, Yap which is over 150 millimeters. Well here it is in the longer range day six, uh, day five to ten there it is becoming a typhoon and it keeps going after that it moving it's moving northwestwards it does recurve but it does become a category four there and look how fantastic it looks on that last frame really impressive from the western pacific early this season if it happens of course so at the moment the facts of the matter are that we still have nothing to the western pacific name so far but that's the gfs calling for a category four not for the first time either Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all of our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request. Our still waiting for Hone t-shirt is also still waiting for you as well. Well in the silly range, uh oh, we're looking at the eastern pacific because something does start to uh, churn itself up. Of course it's not a surprise but everyone gets very excited when we see the first storm of the season in the Atlantic and East Pack. Well there it is, that storm not doing that much, uh, obviously staying well out to sea, becoming a tropical storm peak there. Once again looking out for a formation date, let's see here, it's going to be around the 18th and 19th of May, so that's quite a long way out, 13 days, and so we could still see some big changes to that but obviously it's almost like clockwork that we get a storm at this time of the year. Now look at this in the Western Pacific, a very ballsy run from the long range GFS, that looks to me like a category 3 or at least high end cat 2 typhoon making landfall in the Tokyo metro area. Uh, it's extremely long way out and I would not suggest that that's going to happen for a minute just yet. Uh, but keep watching that closely in Japan as the days go by. Also, two other systems form around the Philippines after that as well, and one becomes a tidy and quite intense typhoon. Crazy stuff at the end of the GFS run there. Back to things that actually happened, May the 6th, 1913, a long time ago, but we did have a Category 2 Typhoon landfall on the previous day, moving through the Philippines to Category 1 by this point. Uh, it was a damaging typhoon, uh, allegedly the worst in eight years, according to news reports at the time, and it killed about 75 people in the Philippines. A Category 2 landfall on this day, 111 years ago. Oh, back to today, the first name on the Atlantic naming list will be Alberto. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Aleta. And in the Central Pacific, it of course is still Hone, as it has been since 2019. 16 storms so far, despite Hidaya, were still 31% below average in terms of cyclone energy this year. In the Western Pacific, the next name on the list is Iwinya, still waiting for it. And in the North Indian Ocean, it will be Remal was still unclassified at this point. We did go down from code blue yesterday. In the Australian region, the next name is Robin. Don't forget Jakarta have their own area too. Southwest Indian Ocean's next name is Yali, and in the South Pacific, it's Pitta. That's all for today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow.